Brothers and sisters, this is your favorite brother from another mother or hallelujah, praise the living God. I just wanted to come on here real quick. The Lord's got me busy studying all these things he's showing me. Hallelujah, praise God, brothers and sisters, praise God. You know that we serve the risen Christ, brothers and sisters. As Paul said, I would know nothing among men except for Christ and him crucified. And know, according to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, that the Lord is coming for a bride to present to himself without spot or wrinkle. Are you part of that bride? Are you without spot or wrinkle? The Bible says in James chapter 4, that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. Have you humbled yourself under the mighty God? Have you humbled yourself? He gives grace to the humble and resists the proud. Therefore, let's bow the knee, not to the things of this world. Even as James tells us, don't you know if you're friends with the world, that you're enemies with God? can't be in love with the world and in, in love with God? Look in the natural way of thinking of it. If a groom, you as a man or even as a woman, think about this. A groom is coming to the house of the bride to pick her up. Even as the Lord is coming back to the earth to get his bride. John chapter 14. He's went and prepared a place for us. He's coming back to get his bride. You go to the bride's family's house to pick her up, who you're engaged to, betrothed to. You go there and you look in the window and there she is in the bed with another man. You know, that is the equivalent of the spiritual adultery that people are committing every day, loved up with the things of this world. Do you think that that groom is still going to marry? Well, if you're a man, would you do that? You see the woman there, she is, you know, your fiance, she's there in the bed with another man. Are you going to go ahead and marry her? If you're the woman, what do you think that a man's going to marry you if he sees you in there? There you are in the bed with another woman, with another man or another one. It's even worse, another woman. Hey, this is, yeah, that's the... 2019 version. There you are in the bed with another woman. And you're, a, you know, instead of being without, there, dressed and ready to go. Because you know not what hour the bridegroom cometh. That you're there. You're dressed. You're prepared. Hallelujah. Even for us, the, the virgins, the ten wise virgins, five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. And there's something the Lord has showed me years ago. Let me, years ago when I first started preaching on the radio, it's coming back to me right now. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. They were all virgins. They were all part of the church, but only five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Five of them were rapture ready. Five of them were Laodicea, lukewarm people. Five of them were wise virgins who had the oil in their lamp. They got their oil by obeying the Lord and following the Lord and being without spot or blemish and walking with Christ. Are you walking with Christ today? Hallelujah, Luke 21, 36, as our Lord said, watch and pray, therefore always that you be kind of worthy to escape the tribulation and stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. And as the Lord told the church of Philadelphia in Revelation 3.10, because you have kept the word of my patience, or you have patiently kept my word, I will keep you out of the hour of temptation to come upon the whole earth to try all those who live upon the earth. Let's pray right now that you be ready, ready in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that, that the Lord will, you get called up to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52. Hallelujah. That we take off this corruptible body. And put on that incorruptible body. Hallelujah. As we meet the dead in, in Christ in air, in the air. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, 17, and 18. Those people who are dead, they're there in their spirit bodies in heaven with the Lord. They're not in their in their incorruptible, glorified body like the Lord was. When the Lord was resurrected, he was in the glorified body. Hallelujah. And those who are resurrected with him, Matthew chapter 28, some of the Old Testament saints were also resurrected and seen walking around Jerusalem that day. Many people saw them. Hallelujah. Praise God. As the Lord gave them a special reward of having a resurrected body already. But everybody else that's died for 2,000 years, they're there in heaven and as a spirit. But they will rejoin their body. Hallelujah. It's called the resurrection. The first fruits of the resurrection already happened with the Lord Jesus Christ. But the first resurrection, hallelujah, is going to happen. It's also known as the rapture. The Latin word for being caught up to meet the Lord in the air. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that's those who are already there within heaven with the Lord. Their bodies will come out of the graves, out of the dirt, out of the ocean, wherever they are. Their DNA will be reassembled into their body. And they will rise first, their bodies. And then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's right, the word right there. Harpozo, Greek, Latin, repturo, English, caught up. To be raptured, the theological term, 
to be raptured, to be caught up, to meet the Lord in the air. Therefore, shall we forever be with the Lord. Takes you back to when I started with John chapter 14. We're going to be in our Father's house with many mansions. Unlike those who will see the Lord at the second coming, we'll be returning with the Lord. He will return with ten thousands of his saints. Jude, we will return as Enoch, seventh from Adam, prophesied that the Lord would return with ten thousands of his saints. It's in the book of Enoch, which is not in our canon of scripture, but it's quoted right there in Jude, the last book before Revelation in the New Testament. So he will return, we'll return with him, brothers and sisters. But in John chapter 14, the Lord speaking to his church said, let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you. Where I am, you may be also. If it wasn't true, I would not, wouldn't tell you that. Hallelujah. The Lord has been there for 2,000 years, even as in the Israeli tradition, the groom goes and betroths a bride like Joseph betrothed Mary. Then he goes back to his father's house and prepares a house adjacent to his parents' house or on his father's property, whatever. And then when his father tells the son, hey, your house is ready, you got enough money, you got everything you need, go get your bride. It's time for your, you know, for your marriage, consummation of the marriage, and all that and coming together. Our consummation with the Lord, of course, is spiritual. A spiritual consummation. Hallelujah. That's why we're the body of Christ. Just as a Ephesians chapter five, I'm gonna do a video on that. It's read at weddings in, in, in evangelical churches that you become one flesh. Hallelujah. That's why we're called the body of Christ. A woman, when a man and a woman get married, they're one flesh. When they unite and then for their whole lives, they are one flesh. As the Lord said in Ephesians chapter five, you can't hate yourself. No man hates his own flesh. That's why you got to love your wife. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That in the text I started out with by talking about Ephesians chapter 5, I believe it's 27. The Lord is coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle, without blemish. He prepares the bride. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father is about to release the only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come get his bride. And the question is, you, as part of the bride, as part of the body of Christ, one flesh with each other and with Christ, by his spirit, by his grace, by his blood, by his name, by faith in his name, to become a child of God, John chapter 1. Are you ready? Are you in faithfulness to the betrothment that you made? When you got saved, you got betrothed. The Lord put down an earnest on you, sealing us by his spirit, as the Bible says, earnest. Like when you buy a house, you put down earnest money, they call it. You put a down payment. The Lord put a down payment on us, a deposit. When you get engaged, you give an engagement ring. The Lord put a ring on us. Hallelujah. His spirit. If you are really born again, you've got the spirit of the Lord on you and you are betrothed. Are you faithful, faithfully watching and waiting, not turning to any other gods? Hallelujah. Even as it says in Psalms 24, who shall ascend to the mountain of God? Except for him with clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted his voice in vanity or lifted his voice to another God. That's who's going to ascend to the mountain of God. Hebrews chapter 12, the church of the firstborn, the Mount Zion, where the Father is, and the, whole, the innumerable angels, and those who are already dead in Christ are there already. Hallelujah. It's all, and the Bible is consistent all the way through, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus, the Holy One of Israel. Father, release a spirit of humility upon your people. For you said, as I quoted from your word, Lord, James chapter 4, you give grace to the humble, but you resist the proud. Lord, fill us, cover us with a garment of humility, Lord God. And a robe of righteousness is waiting for each of us there, just over in the glory land. Holy One. Holy One of Israel, O oh, Adonai. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you are the Holy One of Israel. O oh, Lord God Almighty, just over in the glory land. Yes, Lord, just over in the glory land. Yes, Lord. We bless you, Lord, that we become part of Beulah land. Married land, hallelujah. Beulah land, hallelujah. The land of marriage, hallelujah. The real promised land, 
Hallelujah. So many people looking to earthly promised land. Hallelujah. We've got the heavenly promised land. Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. We enter into the rest by faith in the finished work of Christ. Lord, you said on the cross, it is finished. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We bow the knee. Even as Paul said, I bow the knee to my God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has given himself for us. Hallelujah. And redeemed us from the curse of the law. Jesus paid it all, now all to him I owe. Yes, Lord. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For you paid it all for us. And all to you we owe, Lord. Lord, we owe it to you to be chaste virgins, Lord God, that we separate ourselves from the things of this world so that they would go strangely dim in the light of your glorious grace. Lord, we have to remember. Put us in remembrance where you brought us from, Lord. Let us not forget the pit, the miry clay that you brought us out of. He delifted me from the miry clay, yes. My Savior forever, yes, Lord. You lifted me from the miry clay for you came in from the everlasting to the world we live, the Father's only Son. Thank you, Lord. You lived, you died, you rose again on high. Thank you, Lord. You opened the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah for all you've done. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Through whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all ye creatures here below. Praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Lord, you're good. I haven't sang that song since uh, the first Filipino church I planted. There was uh, four original Filipinos who were Christians already that came to the States out of the 100 Filipinos I worked with, 50 nurses and 50 school teachers. And those four, I think there was a fifth, there was a single, there was two couples in the same group, so there were five original Filipino Christians. And they knew, and, and one of them sang, played the guitar and sang songs. That was the song that we used to sing back there every Friday night when we started the first group. Hallelujah. That song I just sang, you lifted me from the miry clay. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Even as we've been stuck in the in the miry clay, like my grandfather used to say, he was a farmer. He'd say, yep, we can't get out there. It's too muddy. to get mired up out there. To get mired up. That's an old word. I guess that's a King James word. To get all mired up in the mud. And brothers and sisters, the Lord got us out of being stuck in the mud. And we never, never forget where the Lord brought you from. Hallelujah. That he sought you and he bought you with his redeeming blood. He loved you ere you knew him and all your love is due him. He plunged you to victory beneath the cleansing flood, the flood of his blood. Hallelujah. He washed us with his word, and he washed us with his blood. Hallelujah. Don't forget it. Don't forget where you came from. If it wasn't for the Lord, hallelujah, as Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And the expression people use, you know, if, uh, you know, but for the grace of God, go I. Another way of saying it. You see an old drunk. You see an old home, you know, a, uh, you know, an old drunk person and homeless, etc. That's you can see that they're they're drunk or on drugs. Say, if it wasn't for God, I could have been, that could be me. The grace of God. What did Jesus tell his disciples in the Gospel of John? Remember, you didn't choose me; I chose you. The Lord chose us. He said, "No man comes to me unless the Father calls them, or draws them." Praise God, Almighty brothers and sisters. Praise God, Almighty. Never forget where you came from and never forget that the Lord is the one that bought you. Be rapture ready. Be without spot or blemish. Don't people getting caught up there. It's just like when the when the teacher of the law, when Jesus, they asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandments? He said, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your you know being or all yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then the, it says that this lawyer, this teacher of the law, rabbi, is trying to justify himself. Said, well, who is my neighbor? You know, they were trying to say, well, you don't only got to be nice to other Jews. I don't have to be nice. Then Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan, which is, a, you know, mixed blood people there up there in Samaria. In other words, as I've said many times, it's like 1950s and you tell about a black people and white people that the black person is want to help the white person. Other white people wouldn't help them. It's an equivalent way of saying it, that here's a people that are supposed to be racist against each other. 
and they don't like each other, but yet the you know the foreigner that does you know we're like enemies, but yet he helped me, and then my own fellow group of people didn't help me. That's it, brothers and sisters. Stop. Do not. That's the thing with this, you know, all the people were just pushing for the once saved, always saved in hyper grace. They're trying to justify themselves. Don't try to justify yourself. The Lord looks at the thoughts and intents of your heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. We're not trying to get our ticket punched. We're not trying to get the minimum that we can do. What's a minimum thing I can do to get into heaven? Well, I got in by the skin of my teeth. Even as it says in Jude, you know, there was still our second Peter. There's a smell of smoke on my clothes, but I still made it in. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy that's just like got in the light, you know, just got in by the skin of my teeth. That's another, you know, biblical expression. I, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to see what's, you know, let's let's play chicken with the gate with the pearly gates. You want to play chicken with the pearly gates? Go ahead. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, even as Joshua said, Hallelujah. Let's serve the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's give him all the glory. And give him glory, oh, I, I will bless his name. Yes, and give him glory, oh, I, I will praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise him and bless him and worship him. God bless, brothers and sisters. I pray for the peace of the Lord upon you. I bless the things the Lord showed me. I need to make videos about it. I want to get this posted today. Sunday morning in the States. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is always on the throne, brothers and sisters. He's large and in charge. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. May the grace of the Lord be with you today and walk in his love and goodness and grace and do not forsaking. Hallelujah. The Lord and the assemblings of yourselves together. Even more so, as you see, the end times approaching, as Hebrews tells us. But I believe that's Hebrews chapter 10. I could be wrong about that. I can't remember. But don't forsake the symbols of your assembling of yourselves together, brothers and sisters. So for two or more are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of you. So you watch this video with me today. You know, in these last days, we have, we have you know, people have television for the last 50 years. There's even, there used to be some decent preaching on television. I have no idea. Maybe not today, but. Via this internet, you have just fellowship with me. And we are the church, the ecclesia, and two or more are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them, of you. The Lord said, hallelujah. He's in our midst. And that's all we need is Jesus. Hallelujah. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. Hallelujah. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Hallelujah. I'd rather have Jesus. Hallelujah than anything else. There's nothing more important in your life than the Lord Jesus Christ. So many people, even as you know, Jesus said, those who not forsake mother and father and brothers and sisters and husbands and wives and children for me is not worthy of me. So many people, they, I guess that's a whole nother topic. They, they exalt their, even their, you know, their family, which family should be number two. You know, it's God, home and country. First is the Lord. Then second, our family, you know, then the third is country, you know, and that's a pretty good, Order of priorities. Always put the Lord first, brothers and sisters. There's some of you that put country first. I mean, I'm all for the Constitution because you have freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and all that stuff. And supposed to be, you know, so America is great in the fact that, you know, it's it, they're not persecuting Christians uh, too much. It's not legally persecuting Christians. So praise God. So that's why I'm a big staunch supporter of the Constitution because, it, you know, we have. It, because when the founding fathers wrote it, even though a bunch of them were deists and all that other stuff, when they wrote the Declaration of Independence, they said we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, meaning they can't be taken away from us. Some of which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So they uh, they mention right there by our creator. And some people say, well, you should have saved the Lord. Sir. For the government to honor the creator, which is another thing that God is. He is the creator. Elohim refers to him, you know, is the name of God that refers to him as the great creator. It's like El Shaddai, God Almighty. El Elyon, the most high God. Elohim is the great creator God. That's him. Same one, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So praise God. That's where our rights come from, from God, not from the government. And that's an important biblical Judeo-Christian principle that young people today obviously don't know since 60 or 70 percent of them are a bunch of commies in America. Why? Because they don't have Christ. Communism is the government is God, a replacement for God. That's why it's so dangerous. 
that's why we have to connect these things to politics and the rise of the new world order, which so it, they come together. The, the merging of church and state, like in the days of the, not just the Roman Empire, and Roman Catholicism was a merger of church and state. Big disaster, the Inquisitions and all that. But you have Sharia law in Islam, merger of church and state. You have all these ancient religions. Most, many of them were mergers of church and state. And they kill anybody that didn't accept it. So that's what makes America so unique, brothers and sisters. But we have a right to be a Christian or not. We have a right to be an atheist. If you want to be an atheist, go ahead. God, in the word of God, we have a free will. You want to go to hell? Choose this day, life or death. But I recommend and advise you to choose life. God said through Moses in Deuteronomy, choose this day, life or death. Blessings or cursings. But I mean, it's up to you. But I advise you, I'm just paraphrasing, in modern English, I advise you to choose life. So everyone in the world has that free will. God gave the Israelites free will, even in the law. And Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended in me. So we're blessed for loving the Lord. But people can be offended in the Lord, and they've got till the day they die by the grace of God. Hopefully they, they'll, they'll have a chance to repent. And they have that free will. You go to some country, like we're going to chop off your head if you don't bow to Jesus, like the Catholics did in the old days. That's not Christianity. It's not free will. Anyway, brothers and sisters, God bless y'all. I love y'all very much.